Okay, the internet went down for some reason or hesitated or blinked. So I'm gonna back up the page and start from there and get to the rest of this chapter. Um, I guess that's what um, this is gonna be like for a little while. I hope you guys figure out, I restarted it. It was taking forever to unfreeze. Didn't look like it was going to. So I'll figure it out and I'll call the um, cable company as usual before Monday to make sure that when we're doing the entire book, this doesn't keep happening. Supposedly they've upped the power, but you never know. Okay, so hopefully I've gone back far enough to before it got interrupted. A sharp bark and a whine came from the ceiling. The Hatchstrom sisters looked up and all three of their jaws dropped when they saw their immortal bulldog, Speedy, dog paddling through the air just below the ceiling. Suspended by bubbles of Dave's unhinged magic that apparently had no intention of bringing the family pet back down where he belonged. Nathan had gotten up on the couch and now jumped as high as he could, swiping at Speed's back paws and trying to get a hold of the poor animal. Wow, Nikki ran her hand through her dark hair. Em and I leave for a few hours to go rescue Laura from the Gorefrex. And this is our big welcome home, huh? Dave let out a yelp of surprise and whirled toward the sisters. A barrage of brilliantly flashing silver bubbles lighting up the living room like a few dozen disco balls hurtled from the man's outstretched hands. All three Hatchroom sisters ducked and the magical bu bubbles soared over their heads to wreak havoc somewhere else in their house. Nathan stopped jumping on the couch. You're back. Of course we're back. Emily gestured to Laura, and we got her. Okay, try this. Chuck came barreling into the living room from the mudroom in the back, brandishing the sister's bright yellow broom. He skidded to a stop when he saw the witches standing just off the foyer and grinned, you did it. And you guys have obviously been busy. Laura glanced up at Speed, who'd now given up on trying to swim through air and had taken up his usual lazy slump on his belly, just on top of a bunch of pea brain bubbles this time. Nathan laughed and bent down to climb off the couch. Whoa, whoa, get the dog down first. All right. The physics professor nodded at Chuck, who seemed to have forgotten about the broom in his hand. Chuck blinked, tossed the broom to Nathan, and leaped aside when Dave's stream of nonstop magic sent what now looked like fish bowls, fish bowls full of miniature safari animals flying toward the back of the living room. Oh, come on. Nathan swiped at speed with the broom, but now the bubbles had taken the dog far enough away that even the lanky part cash car couldn't reach him with the broom's extra five feet. Guys, I have no idea what's going on, Dave muttered. I thought I'd gotten a hang of this weird magic thing, but now it's... He lurched forward and looked like he was about to vomit. What came out of his mouth instead was a string of bright yellow bubbles. Well, it could be worse, right? Emily shrugged and stepped toward him. At least your magic's not... The first few bubbles falling out of Dave's mouth hit the hardware, hardwood floor and burst with a sizzling pop and a flash of bright light. Smoke curled up from a charred dent the size of a penny in the wood. Then the next two bubbles burst on the floor in exactly the same way. At least his magic isn't dangerous. Nikki eyed her little sister sideways. Is that what you were going to say, Em? Pretty much. Sorry? Even Dave's shout was muffled by another string of bright yellow bubbles. Only these moved much faster and seemed to be seeking out new targets. The first few scattered across the wall just inside the foyer, peppering the old plaster like a spray of machine gun fire. His hands still flashed with multicolored sparks. Hell, not the best time for fireworks, Laura muttered. Let me see what I got. With a quick nod, Emily spun on her heels and rushed across the foyer into the dining room, where just hours before, she and Nikki had used the final tracking potion to help them find Laura. Hurry, Em. Nikki grabbed Laura's hand and gave it a squeeze. So, like you said, let's get on the same page. Right, probably just. The witch's duct as the bubbles that had lifted speed to the ceiling now dropped and whisked the startled bulldog toward them like he was riding a magic carpet. Dave's accidental exploding bubbles followed the poor dog all the way into the dining room. Shields, Laura nodded, just shields. The Hastrom family legacy rings on both sisters' thumbs, silver for Lara and black for Nikki, flashed for their respective colors. A wall of shimmering pearlescent light rose in front of them just before a half dozen sparking, exploding bubbles hit. But Dave's magic just bounced right back off, sending yellow buzzle, bubbles whizzing back through the living room in every direction. Nathan swung the broom at the two bubbles heading toward him. One exploded. 
but the other headed right for Dave, just as another string of magic hurtled from the awakened pea brain's mouth. All of them burst and sparked and squealed. Dave dropped into a crouch, covering his head with his arms. Nathan tumbled backward off the couch and chucked Joe onto his belly across the floor to avoid the tiny yellow birds that had popped free from a handful of the bubbles. Dave, Nikki called, just try to calm down, okay? Calm down? The bewildered pea brain jerked his head up to shoot the witches an incredulous look. I don't know what's ha ow. He flinched away from the sparks still bursting at his fingertips and the strong stink of burnt hair filled the living room. Dude. Chuck crawled toward his friend as the yellow birds fluttered and dove all around the living room. One of them headed straight for the mantelpiece over the fireplace on the far wall. Its dangerous sharp beak hit the carved wood and the birds stuck there like a thrown dart. What if you just like ask nicely for everything to settle down? Ask what? Dave's eyes widened as even more bubbles streamed from his mouth. This time, though, they were a deep navy blue and started swirling around and moving faster by the second. I don't know, magic? That's not really how it works, man. Nathan stood behind the couch, dusting off his shirt. Two more firecracker bubbles shot toward him. Watch it. Nikki lifted her hand toward the parked cash car. Black green flashed and the yellow bubbles burst just in front of Nathan's head, pelting him with tiny marshmallows instead of searing sparks. What? Thanks. Nathan stared at the marshmallows scattered at his feet. I guess that works. Lara pointed at the dark blue bubbles swirling around Dave and wanted to just, just slow them down a little. Her silver ring flashed and the blue bubbles coalesced together into one massive ball in the center of the living room that now looked like it held a growing thunderstorm. What are you doing, Nikki muttered. I don't know, Lara blinked. That definitely wasn't what I was going for. That is the end of chapter one interrupted momentarily by the internet blinking. I suppose everyone's on their internet all at once, but I'll check with the spectrum and see if maybe we can get that figured out, especially before we start reading the entire book starting Monday. Right now the poll is um, pretty much a dead heat between War Mage, book one, and uh, um, Dealing with Magic, book eight of the Lyric Chronicles. But if you have a book you really like to see, like I noticed there's a few votes for her father's daughter, Allison's first book, um, get in on the poll and put it in there and see if you can get people to vote for it. And hello, Nancy, glad you're here. And I'm sure Diane is there somewhere. And um, also, like I said, happy birthday to Dan Wilcox and hello to Ian in Lancashire and hello to Ann, our mushroom expert in Canada. And if you'd like a shout out, just uh, write me and let me know. If you have a birthday coming up, um, let me know that too and I can give you a birthday shout out or a special event. If you just an anniversary, I'm happy to do those too. And I hope you all have a great day. Hi, Diane. And um, I hope things are going well for you. If you need someone to, uh, to at least write to, um, I've got a lot of pen pals going right now, and I enjoy it. I can tell you what's going on here. The walk today was great. Uh, you can't see Lois, but she's right behind me with her head at the window, waiting for something to bark at. And um, I'm going to go and get back to writing Lyra, because there's a lot. Uh, Lyra starts June 29th, new Lyra. And so I need to get that going besides all the other, the other books that are coming out. Um, War Mage came out yesterday, if you missed it. And um, see, the response seems to be great. You guys are enjoying it. I love you all. I'm so, um, this horrible thing that's going on, the blessing that I'm getting out of it is getting to know all of you better. And I am really enjoying that. Take care of yourself and each other. Try and find a little fun in the day. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Tomorrow's reading is The Adventures of Finnegan Dragonbender. But like I said on Monday, we start reading an entire book, which will be posted on our YouTube channel um, by dinner time, my time, every day. So if you catch us in the middle or you miss one, you can go and catch up. Um, take care, and I will see you all tomorrow.